Commission for March 22nd, 2023 with the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, just a quick note before we get started, Cindy would suggest we all speak into our microphones because it makes it very difficult for Sue to make a <laughs> record and anybody in the audience needs to come to the podium. So we got that out of the way. With that, I'm going to say um, roll call, please. Deborah Addy? Here. Mark Bouchard? Here. Christopher Daggy? Uh, present. Chris Hiltunen? Here. Christine Holcomb? Here. Tom Kozell. Here. Robert Musling here. Robert Jacobs. Oh, excuse me, absent. I'm sorry. And Kathy Schweikart. Here. Thank you. Item number four is approval slash amendments to the agenda. Hmm. Make a motion to approve the agenda as submitted. I'll second. Discussion. Roll call, please. Uh, Deborah Addy. Yes. Mark Bouchard. Yes. Christopher Daggy. Yes. Chris Hiltunen. Yes. Christine Holcomb. Yes. Tom Kozell. Yes. Robert Musling. Yes. Uh, Robert Jacobs is absent. And Kathy Schweiker. Yes. Thank you. Item number five: approval of minutes. The minutes for January twenty fifth, twenty twenty three. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for January 25th, 2023. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Was that Tom? Uh, yes, Tom and me. Yeah. Deborah Addy. Yes. Mark Bouchard. Yes. Christopher Daggy. Yes. Chris Altunen. Yes. Christine Holcomb. Yes. Tom Kozell. Abstain. Robert Musling, yes. Robert Jacobs, absent. And Kathy Schweikart. Yes, thank you. Next, I want to ask Chris Hiltonen, if I said that right, yep. um, to please read the rules for public comments and public hearing comments. Please. Yep. Uh, public comment rules. All comments must be made through the chairperson. Comments directed to the applicant from the audience are prohibited. Individuals wishing to speak have time limits, three minutes for each member of the general public and six minutes for a spokesperson of a larger group, for example, subdivision association, condo association, business group, and similar groups. Three, anyone wishing to speak is asked to sign the sign-in sheet provided. However, anyone wishing to speak will be given the opportunity. Number four, each individual will be allowed to speak once. It will be the chairperson's decision as to whether rebuttal comments will be allowed. Number five, citizens may appoint a spokesperson to represent those who agree on a point of view. And number six, public comments on a specific public hearing request should be made during the public hearing for that item. Thank you, Chris. Yep. The first public hearing is regards to 1721 North Channel as a special um, land use public hearing. I will open the public hearing at 708. Is the, Steve, do you, or Karen, excuse me, sorry, Karen. Um, so we did the review for the special approval land use for 1721 North Channel Drive. Uh, the applicant is proposing to establish a coffee and sandwich shop at an existing structure and provide parking and drive through service for customers. Uh, section 2046 uh, uh, restaurant carry out fast food or uh, drive in standards um, apply to uh, the special land use. Um, there's a number of criteria, some of which the applicant met, but um, some others that the applicant will need to confirm. Um, I'll go over the items that the applicant, yeah, we still need more information from the applicant. <coughs> Sorry. Um, um, devices for the transmit or um, on page number it's the third page of the review. Um, item number 10, devices for the transmission or broadcasting of voices or music shall be so directed or muffled as to prevent said sound or music from being audible beyond the boundaries of the site. Uh, the applicant 
will need to ensure that this standard will be met. Um, item number 11, drive in establishments. Drive in establishment management shall provide adequate trash and litter uh, policing for the parking lot and the shoulders of the adjacent roadways. These areas shall be completely cleared of accumulated debris as often as necessary. The applicant will need to ensure that this standard is met. Um, item number 12. During the period for when a drive-in restaurant, fast food restaurant, or carry-out restaurant is vacant, closed, or otherwise not open for business for more than 30 consecutive days, the owner, franchise owner, or lessee shall be subject to complying with the following regulations. Um, Sub-items A, B, and C um, will need to be met by the applicant. Um, other than that, um, based on, on the preceding review, um, I recommended approval upon the applicant being able to confirm the outstanding items. Thank you. Is the applicant here or a representative? Would you please come to the podium, state your name, please? Uh, good evening. My name is Herb Blackstock. I'm the architect working with the owner. Um, as far as uh, items 10, 11, and 12, uh, the owner agrees to those. They've already responded back to the township. Um, I don't remember the representative it, it, via email stating that they've, they agree to all of that. Um, there'll be trash receptacles placed along the site. It's primarily going to be a drive-through service, um, but of course they're gonna maintain their site. They don't want it to look trashy. So they'll, they'll maintain the trash. Um, in terms of blocking the site, if, if for some reason, if it's seasonal, um, or if business does not meet those, you know, what they anticipate, uh, obviously they'll agree to those, you know, blocking the site. That's not a problem. But at this point, they plan on it being a year-round establishment, somewhat normal business hours. Uh, as far as I know, there's no plans to have music blasting outside or anything like that. So they agree to all of those and will meet those requirements. Okay. I see we have a new site plan in front of us tonight. Is that an updated one? No, there were no changes. Okay, there were the no only changes. changes that there are the only changes to the existing building. It's an existing bank. It already has an existing drive-through. On the exterior, there'll be some updates, painting probably, and any repairs that need to be done. Um, they're going to change the window. Right now, it's a banking window, which doesn't allow for food passage. That'll change. And then we're adding the required dumpster enclosure. Other than that, the site's going to remain, you know, other than repairs or up, you know, improvements to landscaping and things. But that site plan should have been what was issued to you originally back in January, I think. December two. Okay, thank you. One quick question. The red hat. Uh, lighting. I didn't. Is there going to be any additional lighting or changes within the lighting? We're not proposing day? any to any changes at this point to what is already there. Um, they'll have to inspect the light fixtures that are there and make sure that they're operational. But we're not proposing to put any additional lighting um, on the site, on the exterior of the building. The interior obviously is going to be renovated for a food service from a bank, or right now it's currently an office. So most of the work, you know, there'll be new lighting on the interior, but that won't have any impact on surrounding neighbors or anything. Has there been any review on the private waste system? In terms of the... Adequacy, it has been sitting vacant, well, it's almost vacant. Yeah, it's, I think, yeah, someone was using it as an office. I'm not sure when they moved it's out of it. Work. Yeah. Um, we can have that looked at um, as part of our... Reviewed. I know that one of the questions for the department heads is whether it was connected to city sewer and what's adequate, but there's nothing in there about private. I'm just oh, no, curious it's, if it's adequate for that. It's city it's water, but it's set to septic, or private septic waste, right. correct. And right. that's why it's primarily just a coffee and sandwich, not a dine-in, full-service restaurant. Mm -hmm. But no, no review's been performed on that? Not at this point. No. So if there wasn't... No, but we can handle that through the building inspection, or the, the, the issuing building permits. Through the uh, St. Clair County Health Department. Mm -hmm. Questions at the moment? No. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anybody in the audience who wants to come in regards to this public hearing for this particular project? Has any comments, wants to come forward? State your name, address. I 
see nobody coming forward or raising their hands. Okay. Um, I will close the public hearing at 7.13. Our members I'll make a motion to approve the special land use for 1721 North Channel Drive um, upon the applicant being able to confirm the outstanding standards uh, will be met support Do you want to enumerate those outstanding, like, like 10, 11, 12? Ten, yeah. The, uh, I think it's... Uh, I think it's 10, nine, 11, and 12. 9. 9. 10, 11, yeah. and 12. 9, 10, 11, and 12. Do we have a motion? Support? Any discussion? You? you okay? Clean as a whistle. All right. Roll call, please. That was Tom and then Mark. It was Tom and Mark. Yes. Deborah Addy? Yes. Mark Bouchard? Yes. Christopher Daggy? Yes. Chris Altoonan? Yes. Christine Holcomb? Yes. Tom Fozell? Yes. Robert Musling? Yes. Bob Jacobs is absent. And Kathy Schweikart? Yes. All set. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, we need to stand up and give you a copy, I believe. That's what we're still doing, correct, mm -hmm. Steve? Okay, or Karen. <laughs> give us one minute, okay? Is there three copies? There's only two. Don't we need three? See, do we need two or three? We used to always have three. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it was changed or not. I mean, it should be three. That's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. yeah. One stay or one goes to the applicant. So we can at least give them theirs for tonight, and then if they need an extra one in the township, we can make that happen. Does that make sense? It's up to you. How about we do this? We'll at least give you a signed copy and you can take that with you and then would you please provide another copy to the building department and we'll handle what we need to do with that. Okay? This was December too. This is going to December. It's full of nothing.
I can have you sign, please. Where it says the applicant. Okay. You're going to have to sign one more, so you can keep that one. No, she signed the wrong slide. Where is that applicant? Did I sign it? Oh, no, she signed it where it says secretary. <laughs> no, I did. No, Robert did. I did. Oh, yeah, this is Cardinal. Oh, that's you? Okay. Cardinal. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'll we'll give you that one. Sorry, give, give me your glasses. <laughs> I have mine, so I'm like, thank you very much. And if you drop the other one off, it'd be great. Yeah, I'll get it to you. If not this week, next week. All right, thanks. Thank okay, that goes back to Robert. Okay, the next item for public hearing is a public hearing for rezoning on 6603 Dyke Road. I will open the public hearing at 720. And that would be Steve, right? Good evening. <clears throat> the request tonight is in front of you is for 6603 Dyke Road. It's located on the corner of Dyke and Cardinal Road, uh, southwest corner. It's uh, 0.177 acres. They're proposing a rezoning from uh, small business to general business. Uh, the property has been used for a number of years. It's, it's unoccupied now, but it was an office retail building, Colony Clinic. Uh, and their intent is to rezone the property to C3, which would give them a wider range of types of uh, uses. Uh, they didn't specify in their application, but I had heard and, and not verifying. You may want to verify with them. It's going to be retail and water-related uh, activities uh, because of the canal. Uh, when we uh, look at uh, recommending on the rezonings, we typically look at the master plan and also the compatibility of the area or consistency with the area. Uh, in terms of the area, the, the requested zoning is consistent with a three C3 zoning on the east across the street. And furthermore, the rec waterfront recreational uses being anticipated are consistent with that area. And also, although the master plan is uh, listed as um, residential transitional, in that area there are a number of uh, commercial uses shown on the master plan. So we have no objection to the rezoning as requested. Thank you very much. Is the applicant present and wishing to come forward and address this? I can. Sure. Come to the podium, state your name, address please. I'm uh, Jared Irwin, and um, I live in at 9418 Stone Road here in Clay Township. Uh, and we are, I'm connected with the Freedom Boat Club is my background, and we have a location here locally at the Algonac Harbor Club as well, where we have 10 boats. Um, and it's not, we're not looking at, at the place for Freedom Boat Club at all, but just general, you know, to help families, children, kids experience the water in various ways. Um, and C2 zoning of that building currently did not allow us to do anything with regard to getting families and kids out on the water. Uh, we're connected with a captain network. And so there's just a, a basic need for us to be rezoned to C3 to invite the ability to do um, business like that for the community. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Any questions at the moment? Uh, what, what's your intent for that piece of property? You have to have some sort of intent for it, right? Yeah, so there's just a uh, kind of a the living quarters upstairs uh, allows us to maybe offer that as a rental for families or fishermen to come and use. Um, it we're, We would have to do some updates to the building and create the separate entrance, but um, something like that. And then our Lake LLC is a... a business that is, you know, a philanthropic business focused on Lake St. Clair and um, its sustainability practices. So we want to host them and allow them to offer their apparel there, uh, as well as just a general means of maybe, um, you know, a boat rental type of deal or a captain outing uh, with our certified U.S. Coast Guard captains that we have, vessel education training, um, and really just a nautical theme uh, for the building and the property at large and um, various, you know, kind of 
educate boater safety, you know, educational events and stuff. We've already kind of started this at, in other areas around the lake and Harrison Township. And so we have uh, the ability to just practice it at home here in Clay Township. And we think that this is a huge uh, boating community out here. And we are really wanting to keep people safe and allow them to experience the uniqueness of what Lake St. Clair has to offer and, and specifically the Lake St. Clair Flats and Clay Township. Got some questions. Do yeah. you have a site plan developed at this point? And what plans are you doing? So we really don't have immediate plans to affect the site too much uh, exterior, more just like in, internal renovations and maybe some signage on the existing building. Uh, but the, the plan right now, immediate plan, is to just focus on you know, renovating the building to a point that it can be attractive um, and inviting. Um, for the community, site plan in order to do the renovation. Can I, a, so, a site plan to a do the renovation. Putting in there and to know well, yeah. parking well, and. Can I see this? Let me read the last paragraph of Steve's um, review. It says he did say I recommend approval of requested zoning from C three C two to C three. However. I am concerned about the potential impacts on the southerly residential property. Mm -hmm. If the property is rezoned, again, if the property is rezoned, the applicant will be required to apply for a site plan slash special land use approval. At that time, the Planning Commission should require the installation of the appropriated, appropriate landscaping barriers or other measures designed to mitigate any potential nuisances. So right now we're considering a rezoning is what we're right. here for the public hearing for. Correct, so, but once it's changed, then, then, they, then it's then changed they, forever. Well, true. As opposed to time, the, but then they have to. You'd have to meet certain standards. Of course, of course they would, but. Um, yeah, I mean, we would have to basically change the idea of the entire business that we want to do in there if this does not get approved, right? So the first initial step was just to be able to rezone that first parcel that would invite the ability to try and get these you know, types the of businesses you're going. You're only doing the one parcel and you own three there. Mm -hmm. So it's just the one parcel. Right. I, all the people involved, ha if I can say, we all have day jobs. So we're, this is just an initial step we're taking that we know if it, if it doesn't get approved for this uh, kind of a use, even the first parcel, we know that we have to, you know, recreate an entire strategy for the investment made here. Um, and so we're just kind of focused on where the, the business would actually start and be able to be So the business wouldn't be able to extend over those other two lots unless you came back and changed Correct. the zoning on those two lots. And we, we knew that from the start, right? And so basically we're hoping to be able to rezone the, the parcel that we can actually start the businesses in and then see if those businesses are invited and successful here and then can scale. And from there we would make plans to you know, take the necessary action to, for the next parcels, if we needed rezoning or special use case applications, we're absolutely, you know, willing to comply with all of that. This is just a more of a, hopefully we can get this rezoned so we can continue down this path of the idea we have to bring to um, what we're gonna call the Lake St. Clair headquarters, hopefully. Well, Steve, the, the, has two entrances and the egress and entrance. There's one off uh, M29 and Cardinal. We've been uh, in this area eliminating them off of like the the bird lanes, like Cardinal and stuff, so it can only come in off M29. Is that something that would be handled at that time, like you're saying, or is that something? No, that would be something definitely be handled at site plan review time. Right. Not mm -hmm. at the rezoning time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Remember, to, uh, rezoning or just listen, listen to the use, yep. not the yep. design property. Got it. Any other questions from the board members? So it is understood that if this is rezoned, because that's what we're doing here tonight, that you would have to come back with a site plan for the business that you're proposing to put in there, correct? You understand that, right? Oh, yeah, correct. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. That's that's what I was hoping to kind of understand is for – I'm new to this as well. Sure. <laughs> you know, kind of young. So just kind of taking the process as, as I get – uh, consulted to as well and that was kind of the the most immediate thing that we could apply to do to see if it's if we should even consider this spot as something to to do the types of business that we're talking about okay. yeah 
question for Steve, if that's okay. Sure. Um, if they had a site plan, could they do the, the site plan, tie the zoning right to the site plan, submit the site plan, and say it's subject to making the zoning change subject to the site plan? That would be conditional zoning. Mm -hmm. And the township, the planning commission cannot ask for that. It has to be voluntarily offered ahead of time by the applicant according to state enabling legislation. Right. So you can't condition it. Any other board questions, comments at the moment? Well, thank you very much. At this point, I'm going to turn it over to any members of the public who have any comments in regards to this public hearing to please come forward and state your name and address. Thank, thank you, you very much. No, you just have to state your name and your address, please. Um, my name is Dave Green. My address is 6607. I actually own the property next door to uh, where we're talking about. I'm concerned the rezoning, are we just talking about rezoning the one lot or is it all three together? One. Just one. the one. Just where, just the one at this point. Okay. My next concern would be um, if that's being rezoned and if I understood the gentleman right there making that retail, where's the parking then? Right now we haven't addressed that. It's just for rezoning of from C2 <coughs> to C3, I believe that's what we're doing. Yep. Can I respond for a second? Sure, go right ahead. So in the building industry, a lot of times, so for them to go in and have plans drawn up to, for a site plan and to, even if they wanted to change the building to do any parking, it, it isn't necessarily a small dollar amount. Okay. So if they don't get the, zoning change then if they went and did all the paperwork and spent the money and they couldn't get the zoning change now they just spent the money without having the ability to do so okay. so all this does is it gives them the ability to kind of say okay go ahead you can start working towards what you want to work at but they still have to submit more paperwork to the township to make sure that they're falling within the regulations that the township has set up for that zoning. Okay. So they, they'll have to meet all the parking requirements and everything for that particular zoning once they're in it. So if I understand you correctly then, if they turn it, if they get the rezoning and then it turns into a retail shop and they decide they're gonna pave the, the two vacant lots, let's say for parking, that has to be presented later? Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's got to have all the right drainage and green space and everything else, too. Okay. Well, that was going to be my next question, yeah. then. I mean, is, that, <laughs> is there some kind of a buffer between? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's the next phase, if okay. we get to that phase, if all we right. get past this phase. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for making your comments. Appreciate it. Anyone else in the audience on this particular public hearing? All right. I'll close the public hearing at 7.33. Board members? I'd motion to approve the uh, rezoning uh, on 6603 Dyke Road from C2 to C3. Support. I would recommend rezoning to the township board for we appreciate that. 6603 Dyke Road. I can see the attorney in the back here is laughing at us too. So. I still support. Sue, so, do you have the motion? Everybody understand the motion? Any discussion? Roll call, please. Thank you, Steve. I'm working on it. No, no, give it. We'll give, <laughs> The proper moment here.
I am ready. Deborah Addy? Yes. Mark Bouchard? Yes. Christopher Daggy? Yes. Chris Tunin? Yes. Christine Holcomb? Yes. Tom Kozell? Yes. Robert Musling? Yes. Uh, Robert Jacobs is absent. And Kathy Schweikart? Yes. All right. Passes. Uh, thank you for everybody's comments in regards to that public hearing. We're going to move on to the next one, which is a public hearing in regards to Cork Hat SALU residential unit. This is in regards to the unit, and I will open the public hearing at 734. And this is Steve. The uh, zoning ordinance specifies that an uh, individual can request a, uh, under special aid, you have a residential unit in a uh, commercial district. Uh, and uh, so it allows you to uh, approve that, especially in places like many warehouses and that, that so sometimes want a, uh, a manager on site. The uh, petitioner is requesting a second residential facility, and he proceeded to the Zoning Board of Appeals and they granted that variance. So he's here tonight to fulfill the requirements of uh, gaining approval by asking for special land use approval. It meets the ordinance consistent to the ZBA granting the variance. Now this is a totally different request than what's gonna be coming to you in the next one, the expansion of the storage facility. This is just in regards to the apartment. This is just in regard to the apartment, this action. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Is the applicant here or representative would like to come forward? Hi, state your name. My name is Paul Muscat. I'm the owner of Cork Hat Storage. Um, we're requesting the second unit be approved. We've met all the requirements and we feel like it meets the needs of the township. <clears throat> Any questions from the board? Go ahead. Is this just a general rental unit or is this going to be for an employee that's also going to be serving your business? General rental unit. Is the other unit that's in the building now, is that also a general rental unit? That's occupied for the employee. For the employee. So yep. this will just be a, okay, this a general rental unit. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Any other board questions? Someone living in there uh, now in the apartment? The existing apartment? Yeah. Yes, my on-site manager lives there. Okay. So I thought, all right. Well, thank you very much. Um, since this is a public hearing, anybody in regards to thank this you. particular item wants to come forward and make a comment, please do so. Please state your name. Good evening. I'm Gary Yenernalek, attorney. I'm not sure if your board knows this or not, but on behalf of some of the neighbors, I filed an appeal in the, in the St. Clair County circuit court that's pending as to the ZBA granting the variances on this parcel. There was two parcels. They were combined and then they went to the ZBA as to three variances that were granted back on January 18th of this year. I filed the ZBA appeal because the Zoning Enabling Act says that an aggrieved party can file an action. So it's now pending, <coughs> excuse me, before Judge West. It's case number 2023-254 AA. Chris Anderson is the township attorney. She's filed an answer or an appearance in that case. So I would just suggest to you that you not take any action on this because that case is still pending. And Judge West has the discretionary authority under the Zoning and Enabling Act to reverse and set aside the variances affirm them or remand it back to the ZBA for future proceedings. So if your group take any action, it kind of puts part of it in jeopardy from the property owner's perspective because they could do something and the judge could reverse what the ZBA did. And without the variance, I don't think the Planning Commission can approve this site plan just as to that apartment because your ordinance says you can generally, I think as Steve said, you can have one unit, but the second unit was part of the ZBA variance process. One was with reference to the second unit. One variance request was the lot coverage 
and the third one was with reference to your zoning ordinance says that the mini storage has to be 50 feet off the property line if it abuts residential, which it clearly does, and the ZBA granted them a 40-foot variance so that the proposed building would be 10 feet off my client's property line, which is kind of an extreme variance. So I would just suggest to you that you not take any action, that you can continue the public hearing until that circuit court case is resolved. And if you had any questions, I'd try to answer them. I have a question. So are all three variances being challenged in court then? Correct, because it's all one package. So the judge can make a multitude of different decisions. Weren't they three separate variances though? Because that's what we have in our packet, three separate variances for three separate items. Correct. And there's three separate irons in the circuit court case. Okay. Okay, since you're speaking about this right now, um, I think we all had received, maybe late, the communication from um, Christine Anderson, our township attorney, and I'm just going to read it really quick. Um, it started out with uh, a question from Cindy Babish about whether this matter could even be placed on this um, board's agenda for tonight. And this is Christine Anderson's reply. Um, well, maybe I should start with the question. Cindy Babish was questioning whether it could be put on our agenda for tonight. She was under the impression that projects that are, are on hold when, there is a, when they are involved in the ZBA decision is challenged, which this one is being challenged. Christine's response is that is true if the appeal is to the ZBA rather than the circuit court. This is appealed to the circuit court in front of Judge West from a decision of township administrative official. Corcat Mini Storage can certainly proceed with their development while the ZBA appeal proceeds through the circuit court process. Such is at their own risk. However, as Judge West may side with the appellant and vacate the variances granted by the ZBA. If you have any questions, give her a call. So I was just following up with what you just said. Just right, so and that's consistent with what right. I said. Because Chris and I have had a few phone conversations. Sure. All right, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any other members in the audience like to come forward on, I'm going to say the apartment. I see no one coming forward. I will close, well, Steve, do you have any suggestions after just hearing what we just heard? I spoke with uh, Christine Anderson today, mm -hmm. and again, she reiterated that if we're, uh, <coughs> We're denying anything based on the ZBA legal action mm -hmm. that she advised not to do that, not to deny based on that because that'll play out in court. If you have other reasons to deny any of this, health, safety, mm -hmm. things like that, uh, then you can deny on both of these. But not based on the fact that her suggestion was don't deny based on the fact that it's currently in litigation. The developer knows that if he loses, You'll have to backtrack. I guess I have a question because of the review and it is three separate variances. And right now this public hearing that we're dealing with just deals with the apartment, which was one variance, which was the additional mm -hmm. apartment. Correct or incorrect? Yes. And it's separated because the apartment's a special land use in the warehouse facilities are site plans. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I, can I ask the applicant a question real quick? Sure. We, um, yes. Sorry, this is maybe a little unusual. No, I'm, I'm okay. So based on what we just heard, you understand that if, if this were to be reverted in court, that those costs and everything would be... 100%. I, mean, you, yep. it just, I wasn't aware that the apartment variance was under circuit court review. So um, I guess that's news to me. But I'm, I'm prepared to move forward um, at my risk. Okay. That was okay, just a question thank you. I had. Thank you. Any other questions? Any more public comments? Mm. I think I'm missing a few. <laughs> um, Steve, anything further before I close the public hearing? And 
I'm closing the public hearing on just the apartments is what I'm doing. Yes. Okay. So I am closing the public hearing at 744. All right. Board members. Steve, can we ask you a question? We're questioning some uh, paperwork for a second. Oh, one. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the clarification. So it's this number. Okay. Hmm? Shouldn't have got that either. All right, any comments, board members, questions, motions, any thoughts in regards to the apartments only? I spoke with Christine a few times also in regards to this whole apartments, the ZBA experiences, and she basically re she basically said the same thing that Steve just reiterated tonight. It's a separate consideration, and the applicant now has said that he's very well aware of the risks that potentially could be involved. So, if that's the case, we'll make a motion to. Uh Recommend special land use approval for 3486 Point Trumbull Road. Should we list the residential unit number too, to make it very clear? Okay. Do, you want, do you have that? Where is that? 74-14-442-0001. Dash yeah, That's Tom's motion. I'll support. I'll support. Any more discussion? Steve, does that sound like a clear motion? Okay. And I will go and Sue, you okay with that? Say it one more time. I think it's all right in here, isn't it? As long as we point to the document. You should be okay. Okay. All right. Roll call, please. We can get a chance. Deborah Addy. Yes. Mark Burchard. Yes. Christopher Daggy. Yes. Chris Tunin. Yes. Christine Holcomb. Yes. Tom Cozell? Yes. Robert Musling? Yes. Uh, Robert Jacobs is absent. And Kathy Schweikart? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Okay, we're going to move on to item number six, which is new business. Under item number six is 6A, which is a pork hat storage expansion, which is a site plan. So I will have Kieran. We did the site plan review for the um, expansion of the mini storage operation. Uh, this includes the construction of a security fence, additional landscaping, and 11 additional storage buildings. Um, the total uh, proposed square footage of the 11 storage buildings will be uh, uh, 43,124 square feet. Um, the applicant has, had a ta has attained variances for maximum lot coverage side yard setbacks, and a second residential unit. Um, the site plan we reviewed um, continued to meet the standards of the uh, mini warehouse section of Clay Township Zoning Ordinance um, with the following exceptions. Um, 
Item number two on page two, the total lot coverage of all structures shall be limited to 35% of the total lot area. Um, this was met through the um, variance that allowed the property to receive or to exceed 35% um, uh, um, maximum lot coverage. Um, item number, or on page number three, um, the following items still need to be addressed by the applicant. Um, item number nine, no single storage, or I'm sorry, item number 10, or I'm, I'm sorry, not the third page, Ten. the fourth page, um, or no, item number 11, the outdoor storage of recreational vehicles, motorized homes, and travel trailers may be permitted. All such areas shall be on aggregate treated surface or better. Such storage shall be completely screened from view from adjacent residential areas. Um, the applicant will need to um, address this item and um, confirm that this standard will be met. And also additional lighting um, will be provided mounting on the proposed structures. Fixtures are indicated to shield downward and will not exceed the height of the building. Lighting intensity needs to be confirmed that, that it will not exceed three foot candles nor be below 0.5 foot candles. So we basically need, um, the applicant needs to submit a lighting plan with cut sheets to, uh, the, building de to the building department to confirm that all those things will be met. <coughs> okay, at this point we've, we've not received anything. In I have not. You yeah, have we, not. We okay. have not. I don't know if Cindy has yet. Okay. But um, aside from the applicant be, being able to um, um, address and um, address those standards, uh, we recommend approval. Um, of the um, site plan. Thank you, Karen. Appreciate it. I know the applicant is present. <laughs> Again, please state your name. My name is Paul Muscat. I'm the owner of Corcat Mini Storage, as you all are aware. Um, I've I have prepared to meet the standards of the lighting. We're not planning on putting any poles. Everything will be building mounted, so I don't feel like that's going to be a concern. Uh, We've gone through ZBA, met all of our variances. We do understand that there are a couple in um, appeal. I did meet with the property owner that is appealing before I came to ZBA and tried to, to work through this. Um, I feel like we're doing everything and meeting everything that site plan reviews, and I'm hoping for an approval. I understand I'm moving forward at my own risk. Appreciate that. Um, any questions? Any, I was going to say any questions. I have a couple questions. And actually, I'm just going to say right now, too, which is a little bit maybe unusual, but I noticed on our fire department check review list, there's a lot of comments that were made. And maybe before we ask you some questions, I see Chief Rose is here. I don't know if you would be willing to come up and explain some of the. Can, can I add a couple things to that to interrupt you? In regards to that? Yeah. Sure, go right ahead. I did meet with, after ZBA decision, I did have a meeting with building official, Chief Rose, and the fire inspector, and Steve, um, to kind of review a lot of these items. And I feel like most of those items that are, if not all, are on that site plan that we sent in. We did uh, add a two-hour firewall to the two buildings that abut Miss. Uh, that parcel that's the residential parcel mm -hmm. and added two fire hydrants to the parcel to try to try to help with their concerns chief do you agree with what he just said I have not seen the oh wait, wait i'm sorry steve <laughs> hold on steve was saying go ahead steve i'm not seeing the revised site plan you, you exactly right but i haven't seen it okay has anybody else? I said, how about we have Gary and um, Chief Rose come forward, if you both would, please? Only because I know Cindy will be yelling at me because we can't hear what you're saying back there. I know a little bit unusual, but maybe we can get everybody on the same page. So I know Steve just said he's not seen a revised site plan. Okay, no, but you haven't reviewed it. I get that. Um, you just heard what... The applicant said, do either Gary and or the chief have any comments into your concerns? You want to say something? Uh, we did have a meeting. Uh, we did agree on those two things that he just discussed. We also agreed on 
uh, direct uh, access down the fire lanes. So there would be two gates at the north end of the, uh, of the complex and two at the south end. That has been addressed okay. on the site plan. Off of fruit. That those gates off of fruit wouldn't be a general access though. Right? Fire only. Okay. How about the firewall you were requesting? He, uh, we, we discussed that. He, he said that he would put a two hour firewall on the, on the buildings above, um, um, that are against the uh, residential side of uh, the property. Okay. So those were your three concerns you had? Yes. Okay. And you haven't seen a revised site plan yet, plan yet, did you, or did you not? You did not see a revised site plan with those included yet? Not yet. Okay. Thank you. Gary? Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we did have a, a meeting on the uh, proposal, and uh, the meeting went well, and uh, the property owner did agree to some things, and a lot of it is uh, fire separation, uh, fire lanes, uh, and making sure that uh, um, Chiefs guys can get in there and out safely. And um, I think we addressed all those at that, that meeting. Since we have everybody up here now, um, <laughs> how about planning board members? <laughs> I have a couple of questions right if ahead. I could. Um, so the site plan that we have is a revised site plan, so nobody else, nobody else saw that? The, the plan that we have in our uh, packet has the firewall, um, fire hydrants, fire lanes, everything's on here. So if you guys didn't yeah, get that? I, I did see it. Okay. Um, so I guess a couple of questions I have actually are, are regarding some of that. You said, Paul, you said there is a gate on the south end. Yes. I, I saw two on the, on, the, on the north side. So I, I was just concerned with the... This, this the, is a gate. That is where it is. I don't know my eyes aren't that good. I know, it's, it's small well, here. I, on that site plan, there is a gate on the right south end. Says on gate. That weird angle. Okay. Our, our plan was right there. to put grab. I can probably show you on here easier because I can't see. I'm just thinking for a fire truck. I know they're not easy to turn. So we were addressing that, making sure that the fire trucks could get down both fire lanes. Okay. okay. Yeah. I mean, if there's a gate right there at that end, then that's just a straight shot. Yeah. So that's our plan, and we were okay. going to put gravel with grass over it so that it didn't look like a road for people to access, and just be like a knock spot right or something like that for you guys to get in. And and then my other concern is you show a six inch water main coming off of the 16. That's, in my opinion, I do this a little bit, that's undersized, that's not gonna work. Me as well, that will be it. We'll size that to eight, we'll work on that when we go for engineering review. Okay. Those are just two things that stood out to me, I don't know. Well, I can't read it on there, but I can read it when I blew it up. <laughs> <laughs> on here, I don't know what it is. The residential side he's talking about. Oh, you got full size ones on this side. Yeah, yeah. This whole wall will be a two hour firewall. Where? This, That's good. We can look at it. This. The two hour, two hour I can firewall. Share with you guys. Uh, which one is Thank you. These are the building Yeah. Yeah, this is the storm. You know what? I'll share with you. I'm going to not only go and find, I got a PDF for Say ZBA approved this already? No. So, they Steve, seeing this for the first time, do you yeah. have any comments? Any recommendations? To that's like they put that fence in there and a uh, uh, gate. I'm sorry, say it one more time. I just conferred with the chief. Yes. And looking at the site plan, I'm not going to speak for him, but it looks like his comments were applied with. Yes, yeah, that's what I see. On this site plan we have right here today. Okay. And as far as. The one you should have had there, the appropriate one, looks like it was dated. Two. On the bottom, revisions three two twenty three by order. Yep. Okay. Yep. So going back to my question. That's the one. Yeah, three two twenty two. So we know what the attorney says in regards to the lawsuit. Her stance on it for the township. You understand what's going on as far as a lawsuit and your risk of moving forward. 
100% I do. Okay. In regards to this particular, especially mini storage. <laughs> I'm, I'm very, very aware of, of okay. proceeding in my own risk. I just go through the checklist that we get provided in our packet. Building department said approved as per ZBA. That's what you checked off on two items for will the height and area meet and for the the rear, front, and yard set, side art setbacks. That was yours in regards to the ZB, correct? correct. Still, still correct. Um, fire department, we addressed uh, the hydrants, water lines. Um, egress, egress, the gates, firewall, correct? And all that is now included on the state plan that we have in front of us. Okay. So that's all the checklist items that we had in our packet. We understand what the ZBA did. Any other questions, comments, discussion? Decision making process, so we even, even if we've taken into the court action that's going on, are we supposed to even consider that in our decision making process here? I guess it depends on whose point of view. I know, I know. <laughs> we have a representative here representing um, the people who are who have filed the lawsuit, making his recommendation. I'm going to say recommendation, correct me if I'm wrong, that it would be wiser to not proceed. We have a town of Sheriff Attorney Christine Anderson. We all know what she said. Mm -hmm, I know. It's Her terminology to me is usually stay in your lane. <laughs> um, I can see you're doing that in court. Um, the applicant is very well aware of proceeding at your own risk. Would I say I'm uncomfortable all around? Yes, but I also mm -hmm. understand as a legal point of view, and there's going to be a judge who's going to figure out whether the ZBA was accurate in what they did or not. Right. So. And may, may I say Oh, go right ahead. You said on the ZBA, too. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you were there that day or not. I was not. Um, if I was the applicant, I think it would be prudent to have all my ducks in a row. Mm -hmm. So at the conclusion of the court case, you can either go forward or go forward, but at least you'll be able to hit the ground running if it gets approved. Mm -hmm. And I, I would probably do that myself. So that makes sense to me. I, I feel like if I have to start over if, if in whenever that case is resolved, mm -hmm. or, you know, or I can start working. Right, exactly. But he's not looking, you're not looking to hold up. If you get approval tonight, you're looking at getting started well, well, on the construction right away. No. no you're no, going to no. wait for the court. Action to I am going to continue with my engineering. I have a long ways to go still mm -hmm. with process of, you know, civil engineering design, underground design, and things like that. So I'll, I'm going to continue working on all of that design um, as, as my site plan gets approved. I'm not going to be digging holes um, or doing any of that until court case is filed. But I want site, I'm asking for site plan approval to continue with my engineering drawing. And as somebody can answer this question, maybe Steve. If if we approve this site plan, knowing that it's contained with the ZBA variances, if it's not successful in if, if the ZBA's um, decisions overturned, this site plan just goes by the wayside. Yes or no? I'll be back. We'll be back. <laughs> Terminated. I want to clarify one thing in the ZBA. Approve it or just make recommendations? They approved it. They approved it. They approved it. They approved it but if I'm reading it correctly, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. But I, I have ZBA no, they, approval. They approved it. They approved it. Yes, they did. Yeah. This is an approval. So that's where we're at. So would the building department allow permits? I mean, if this court case took forever to resolve, would the building department allow permits to go forward and, and start construction even if it was in litigation? We, we could. Sure. Yeah, so we could. Sure. At That's your own risk. Yeah. yeah, it's at your own risk. Right. 
and that's by the advice of our township attorney. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're basing a lot on what she's told us we could or could not do. Mm -hmm. It was a definite and, maybe. <laughs> well, um, and I have no idea how long it will take to get through the court system. I have no idea. Unless you have any idea and as far as your field. It will take a few months. That's why I was guessing. At least. Yeah. If we can't even consider really the court case, no. then no. Mm -hmm. we've got to be able to it. Mm -hmm. the department heads have any issues with it. It is a different one than we've had ever in front of us before. Just to clarify, I will start construction. I just will wait on the, the, the rear buildings. If you know, you know, if we do, if I do get approval and get site plan approval and, and go through engineering and get all that done, I would probably want to start on buildings that don't affect that variance. If that if that would be approved or not. Sense too. Okay. Any other questions, thoughts, comments? Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh no, I was talking to Mark. Okay. That's a real deal. Let me ask you this, Steve. Is this something we could table? Since I'm seeing pretty much silence at the moment. Well, you certainly have that right, but again, on the advice of the attorney. Yeah. Yep, I know. She All right. Indicated you can, she strongly suggested you do not deny it based on the ZBA pending court action. If you're going to deny it, have a reason that it doesn't need the ordinance or health safety and welfare concern. And, and I agree with what you just said, because I've had the same conversation with her. Um, at this point, I don't see where we have a self that health safety and welfare issue at this particular point. And if somebody thinks we do, say so right now. Um, <clears throat> with the ZBA's variances, they've met with the site plan and everything else. Um, you're looking at me, Chris. Because uh, I'm going to motion to okay, approve no. <laughs> a motion to approve the site plan for Corcat storage, uh, the revised site plan of 3723. I'll second it. Okay, so we have a motion in support. Um, any discussion? You can use the date on that. Steve, anything else you think we need added to the motion? No, we're good. I think you're good. All right. No discussion. Any further? Nope. Sue, you all, all set? I would ask for a roll call, please. Who was the second on that, Tom? Tom. Yep. Uh, Deborah Addy. Yes. Mark Bouchard. No. Christopher Daggy. Yes. Chris Siltunen. Yes. Christine Holcomb. Yes. Tom Kozell. Yes. Robert Musling. Yes. <clears throat> Robert Jacobs is absent. And Kathy Schweikart. Yes. All right. We need to stamp three of these. Yep. Okay. We already have three up here. Yeah. Give us just a minute. Can you put this in here? I think it's pretty cool. What's that? The step back is over the 10 foot? Yeah. No, we just need one. Actually, you can do it. Or you can do it anywhere. Thank you for providing. Yeah, you're right.
It was a little hard to even read on the What's the reservation he's talking about? I enlarged it, but I was not doing it. Can you what? Can I get a copy of that update? You need to stamp if he's willing to use extra, I need to do that. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Just wait one second. We need three. We need three. Okay, there's one. You got one? Yeah, I got one. 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 Yours is not signed. We're doing three signed yeah, ones. Well, that's the one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There you have to hold it. Oh, no that's problem. what you want to do. Thank you. Oh, okay. That's that one uses a signature. I'll give you my pen or some applicant. That's for the apartments. Um, one's gonna, you can take that one and then we'll keep the other because two. Because that's the apartment. That's the signature. Sure. So hold on a second. So we'll go anywhere. You are right. This one doesn't have one. That's the no. Yeah. Yeah. With this, that's where you get that yeah, one. Trying to keep the walls. So we'll keep them on the same spot. I got gotcha. you. Two hour burn. Okay. Yeah. 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 Something like that, or or do yeah. two and bring them. Okay, this is yeah, that wouldn't work. You have to do the one in the middle. I don't know. Oh, these are all the same. Okay. So how many is here? There's like twelve. I'll take that one there. Yeah. Well, I can't. Still got to get by you guys. Under under litigation, I can't say too many things. What is uh? It's just special language. Does it have a little stamp inside? I don't, it says stamp. Yeah. Does it? Okay. Thanks. Here's. Okay, these yeah, are back and signed to you. Yes. Yep. This is the apartment, yep. Yeah. Really? That was yeah. only two of these. Right. Okay, you can keep this one. Do you not have an apartment when you have? You got that one? You just need to know signatures so I think we need a request to move stamp. You wore out the stamp? It's not in the budget. <laughs> it doesn't stamp very well. Okay. One more. And while we're doing all this, this one says to stamp and sign for the for the rezoning. For rezoning. Oh, yeah. Why I are we no stamping idea. everything now? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Yep, now why do we need to stamp it? And why are they? Even that. Even the special land use. Yeah. Oh, Steve, can I ask you a quick question? Because in our packet yeah, for Bob, there's something that says stamp that this, the that's rezoning saying, one that yeah. we just did uh, yeah. for um, so I asked that question. Yeah. the yeah, so doctor's the, office. The manager's living Isn't there. Isn't it just... I haven't got a problem with it. Can we send that to the site plan? Right. right. In the site plan, I would have done For the rezoning on the... Could have sent something. I didn't think so. Yeah, because it would be made some real What about the, the special land use for DMO? Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, halfway through. This is. I gave you my yeah. minutes. There's a better one. Right, this is. Okay, put them in here. Clip them because there's a clip right there. Okay. All right, moving on to item number seven, which is unfinished business. The first thing under unfinished business is 7A, which is 5981 Point Trumbull, Restrooms, Pearl Beach. Steve? Uh, the Planning Commission actually tabled this last time so that uh, the, the department heads could do more formal review. I believe it's in your packet now, the department heads reviews. I don't see any issue in recommending approval. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the applicant, I think, is already bracing, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, as a supervisor, the as township, a supervisor, sure. so yep. I don't see him present at the moment. Um, okay, now I gotta catch up. How about 
board members. Any comments, questions, since we have Steve up here looking at it, or does the building department or fire department? I recognize both of you back there. Anybody have any comments in regards to the Pearl Beach? I see no comments. <laughs> okay, I'll go back to board members then. This approval is for the parking lot and, and the, the bathroom restroom. facility? And the restroom. Yes. Yes. Two approvals just, or just, just one? Just a small parking area. Just a small little parking lot in front. Not the whole thing. Yeah. It's the one highlighted. I don't know if you have the color copy. It's the, uh, I don't know the color copy. One, two, three, four parking Who's spaces or three. three. Why do we, why do we have yeah. the other one? The other parking area is that not happening? The one that has the big yeah. spaces. All I'm aware of is those other three. I don't know why you would have them. You're talking up by the water. Yeah, I think they're just trying to show you how it relates to yeah. everything. So we're not approving that. We're approving the bath facility with the four parking spaces at the facility. Yes. Okay, I got tabled last time because the, the packet we thought was not complete. Yeah. So that's why it was tabled last time. So what do we think this time? Well, there are all the reviews are in there, so. And a recommendation from you, right, Steve? Yes. So it's just the parking in front of the bathrooms, not there? Correct. Not You're there. only asked to approve the... Uh, Small parking area in front of the just bathrooms those in the bathroom. Paved sites, then. Yeah. Right. Nothing around the. No. So there's, it's just basically. The request only came in for you guys to look at the bathroom and the four parking spaces. Okay. Uh, nothing around. But then it's got a. <laughs> but then we get this conceptual drawing in here. Oh. Did you get line. that? Yeah, but that wasn't on the. Drawing that I received for review. Again, it's not clear, but. Um, okay, but shouldn't we be clear what we're approving? Because right now, <laughs> and I wish she was here just to ask the question because. Yeah, this is how we got it. It's all attached. This. Okay. Is that that's a conceptual long range plan. So don't even. No, it's not Yes. So should we like <laughs> very much so? That, that it is. Yeah, that's the long range plan, it's just this. Okay. okay. So you're saying yeah, that is really talking. not, should that's it be attached to this? No. Oh, it's just giving you an idea that's of what's going to happen. I missed it. They're just giving you a heads up. This is okay. what they're asking for. Before. Just that. Yep. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Sure makes sense to me. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Mark, well, you're not telling Chris, the truth. It's just ask your questions. It's you got building, questions? No, I don't. You. It's a building and three parking spots. One of them's handicapped. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you this. I think at our last meeting where we had, you got you educated us that they really don't have to. The township doesn't have to come to us for any of this, right? <laughs> that is correct. The state enabling legislation says the township is exempt from zoning and local approvals. So, so any of the zoning, local or other, they are exempt. So schools don't come before you. Okay. Trailer facilities parks. and townships facilities. They, it's always good practice to do it. So it's courtesy. It's to the public, obviously, that you're following your own rules. Can I ask it's not this? Required. Okay, let me ask this question. If we approve this because they came to us seeking our approval, what happens on the next phase? Do these it's up to the township board if yeah. they want to send it so to you or not. Yeah, it's whatever they want to do. Gonna happen, what do you do? I'm going to yeah, make the motion to approve yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the site plan. If we don't approve it, if we don't, if we, would we have, do we object to it? If we don't approve it, does the township board have to approve it or they can just do it without anything to do with it? They can just do it. And it all meets all the ordinances. Yeah. 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 Let's make a motion. Courtesy. And the most important thing is. Let's approve it. Yes. Well, is there another option? To Why wouldn't we approve it? Oh, oh, let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> it was, I appreciate them coming to us and um, submitting the information. Um, 
But now that I have the knowledge that they could go to the next phase and not bother with anything else, mm -hmm. I don't think they would. I mean, they could. And I understand that. So is either approve, don't approve. Is there any other options, or we're just yeah. what's in what's another? You can file and concur with your request and wish you best of luck, kind of. Mm -hmm. Oh, that would be my motion. <laughs> Say it again, one more time. Concur. I mean, receive and file and what concur they with your request and move forward. Go to the bathroom and parking. Just do that. The way you're not approving, like you're that. just agreeing that you don't have a problem. Okay. You okay? With yep. All right. Do you well, want to amend your motion? Sure. I'll well, motion to concur with their recommendation and receive and file. Hold on. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay, go ahead. With a motion. Motion to. To concur with their recommendation for the Pearl Beach Park restroom facility. And small parking. <laughs> and parking. Small parking. Okay. Receive and file. That's your motion. That's my motion. How are you doing there, Bob? <laughs> I'm doing good. <laughs> <laughs> we have a second. I'll second. Very good. WA has a second. Sue, you got the motion. Any further discussions? What was it? It was what and file. <laughs> Receive and file. <laughs> That's right. When you're ready, can we have a roll call, please? <sighs> Deborah Addy. Yes. Can you read the motion, please? Sure. Concur with site plan of Pearl Beach restroom facility and small parking and received and filed. Thank you. Mark Bouchard. Yes. Christopher Daggy. Yes. Chris Hiltunen. Yes. Christine Holcomb. Yes. Tom Kozell. Yes. Robert Musling. Yes. Robert Jacobs is absent. And Kathy Schweikart. Yes. Thank you very much. Township can do their thing. Thanks for your help, Steve. You're welcome. Um, item. 7B under unfinished business would be zoning ordinance text amendment noise ordinance. Now, do we have to stamp this? No, we, no. we, we don't because it's just received and filed. Yeah, first of all, though, it's incorrectly written on the uh, agenda. It is a noise ordinance, it's not a zoning ordinance amendment. It is a uh, general ordinance of the township, police power type ordinance. It does not follow under the zoning ordinance guidelines, public hearings, and notifications. And it's an ordinance that is adopted solely by the township board. But what uh, what the planning commission had requested is that they work to develop this noise ordinance to suggest it to forward it to the township board for their consideration. And we uh, worked over the last several months to come up with some ideas that we thought would, could be sound and you know that the board could consider. I did receive a call from the township supervisor along with the police chief uh, a few days ago and also met with the police chief and the township supervisor. Uh, the police chief is not in favor of this ordinance. He uh, thinks it takes too much uh, authority away from an officer, discretion away from an officer with dealing with the situation as they see fit as they arrive. And he's also concerned that uh, the decibel, a specific decibel reading of whatever it might be, can easily be exceeded just by talking at times, and it's very tough to quantify. Uh, his third concern, and there were others, and I don't want to speak totally for him, but his third concern is that uh, this would be handled by ordinance enforcement instead of the police department, and that would be an issue. And I'm sorry, and then there is a fourth concern that uh, it is very difficult for his police officers to uh, be trained in noise monitoring, and that noise monitoring constantly fluctuates. Uh, I told him I would re uh, provide you with his comments. Uh, and he also knows that the final authority of this rests with the township board, too. So I'm sure he'll be making his comments to the township board if and when you send it to him. We also have in our packet, um, I believe it's in regards to this, the noise ordinance, a um, letter from a Mark McLellan. And um, 
Did everybody review this one? Mm -hmm. Everybody receive it? Okay. You made a couple comments in regards to, um, oh, number one in section A, it states, quote, such noise levels shall be measured on the line or on the adjacent property, which is receiving the noise. His suggestion was this should be changed to, quote, measured on the property line. Um, he has said something else in regards to on the rocks, but this is just as a general ordinance. I'm going to read that. The other one is, um, uh, maintaining sound levels. All entities in the township have an equal responsibility to maintain the quote livability of the neighborhood. If a business is next to a residence, it is only common sense that the decibel levels should be the same resident to resident. And business, ah, business to resident. So that was his input. So, so we have our proposed draft or noise ordinance. It would only be a recommendation to the township board, and they could do what they want, right? Mm -hmm. Any comments, discussion in regards to what we now have in front of us as far as the Clay Township noise ordinance draft? In your meeting, Steve, with the. Uh Township Supervisor and Police Chief, did they have any recommendations or I, suggestions, or they just didn't like? They didn't have any suggestions to, to change this ordinance, but I, I got the impression, again, I don't want to speak for the Police Chief, sure. but I got the impression that he was comfortable with what we had now, okay. which allowed his, you know, a phone call to be made to the Police Department, and they could come out and determine the appropriateness of the allegation. Okay. Way back when we looked at what we had and we're wondering if maybe we should tweak it just because it seemed a little general. Obviously, this is why we had these discussions and um, we have a noise ordinance in place right now. Potentially, we could send it to the board. They could do what they want or we can leave it as is. Thoughts, discussions? Go ahead. The uh, police weren't going to be enforcing this, the, the noise ordinance. Is that, uh, I thought there was some discussion a while back, and we went pulled all the police records, and that they're not actually, that wasn't part of their duty to do that. I don't know. Explain to me that he felt it was his officer's responsibility. So they are, so when someone does call, they make a report. And, Based on a call, you know, complaint. Yep. And how do they, do they actually determine or quantify the sound or is it come over level or it's just that officer's opinion as to what's too loud? It's my understanding it was their officer's uh, discretion. Discretion. So, Steve, <laughs> uh, what have you seen in regards to noise ordinances in other communities? It varies. There are some like you have now that it's up to, and there are others that have similar ordinances to this. It's just half a dozen, you know, different ways. Yeah, it varies. So Steve, the reason, oh. I was gonna say, Steve did provide us a while ago about New Baltimore's yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and Harrison Townships. Mm -hmm. yep. I think were the two that he provided. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So the reason that we, we were looking at some sort of noise ordinance was so that we could be consistent, consistent with every business that that we were talking to. If I mean, if some of the township officials are okay with the way it was, I mean, it just seems like that was the main reason we were doing this, is so that we, we had, we could recommend something to them so that they could have consistency for enforcement, but... If they're not looking for that, then why feed are. it to them? Some of them maybe. I only hear, you know. Oh, no, and I guess I mean. That, so at that point, we could recommend this to the township board and let them make the decision because that is their decision to, to make. So that's kind of where I'm leaning towards. We like, kind of they know what's in place now. Steve and whoever else in his office spent the time and energy with us to go through and give them this new draft. Mm -hmm. If the board doesn't mm -hmm. want to do it. They can keep doing with what they've got. That's a appropriate well, way to proceed. Okay. So and, and the whole purpose that we are working with on this is so we could possibly have situations with on the rocks mm -hmm. that would be solved well, to some extent to. with this. 
Well, we might so, just have to move and, forward. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah, so. No, I don't disagree with your um, thought process, absolutely. But at this point, um, I think we've potentially done the best we could yeah. with all, like, the totality of the picture that's going on for us. And we can make a recommendation, and then it's up to the Board of Trustees to do what they want. If that's the direction we want to go, or we just leave it alone and... Well, I've seen on the like the for that coffee shop. Yeah. One of the recommendations was, you know, uh, the decibels at the property line. Right. You know, doesn't that pretty much cover it? Everything right there. With that. I mean, you could almost one. do it in a sentence. For that. For that one. Though. For that one, it does. There's nothing else out there. Uh, anything, right? I mean, any noise is going to be at the border at the well, property line. I don't line. know. I guess you can put anything in here. You can make it. Yeah. So it's totally unenforceable the way I look at it. Yeah. I mean, who's going to do the enforcement? The police department isn't going to do it. They don't have decibel meters to carry with them, nor are they trained in decibel training. And uh, so, yeah, this can, you know, I'm okay with it going before the board, but, you know, we're going to have the same discussion up there. Yeah. We've had here. Well, you guys can discuss that if we yeah. get a motion that goes that way. So, that, we so know what is the answer going forward with restaurants that want to have outside? What is the answer? I mean, Put restrictions on the site plan, decibel levels, and ways of monitoring it, or don't even worry about the noise. Well, it at, is, at that point, it goes to the enforcement. The enforcement would still go to some sort of municipal yeah. aspect of it, and it goes right to where Mark's saying they're not trained in doing it. So how is it ever enforced? Well, the, uh, no matter what restrictions we put yeah. on the site plan or anything, how is it ever enforced? Their own discretion. Yeah. Some of the questions I had for it too is how is it going to be enforced with a code with a mm -hmm. code officer or the police and who's trained and would stand up in court. Any other discussions, comments, motions? Part of this, go ahead. Um, make a motion to table it. Mm, I'm not sure. Okay, go ahead. We table it. No. Is there any audience that could no. table it? No. I'm not sure on that one. Well, we have a motion for tabling. What does that do for us? That's what I'm trying mm -hmm. to do. Just puts out. it aside. It doesn't do. Call back at any time we want to. Is that what it does? Is that if, if we table it, we can bring it back anytime? You can postpone to a certain date, but you can table it and bring it back anytime. It doesn't have to be the next meeting. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion to table the noise draft ordinance, and we have a second by Debbie Eddy. Any discussion? Sue, on the same page. Robert, when you're ready, roll call, please. Deborah Addy? Yes. Mark Bouchard? Yes. Christopher Daggy? Yes. Chris Altoona? No. Christine Holcomb? No. Tom Cozell? Yes. Robert Musling? No. And Robert Jacobs is absent. And Kathy Schweikart? No. And so that's one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. So. <laughs> <laughs> what happens with the tie? Show, show hands. Got a coin. <laughs> you can create, if somebody wants to come forth with another motion, you can. Oh, if boy. not, it just dies to the next meeting. Yeah, I would have to. I'll motion that we move this to the township board and let them make their decision. Second. Any discussion? There is no discussion, Robert. When you're ready, Sue, do you have the motion? Roll call, please. Who was the second on that? That was me. Yes. <laughs> Deborah Addy? No. Mark Bouchard? No. Christopher Daggy? Yes. Chris Hiltunen? Yes. Christine Holcomb? Yes. Tom Kozell? Yes. 
Robert Musling, yes. Robert Jacobs is absent. And Kathy Schweiker. Yes. Motion is approved. It's yeah. going to the board, yes. It's going to the board. No okay. Time. Board members have fun. <laughs> All right, thank you everyone on that one. Let's move on to um, 7C, which is on the rocks located at 7479 Dyke Road. Okay. Um, we have already had a public hearing on this that was conducted back on August 31st of 2022. I double checked with our paperwork with the township. Um, so we're gonna start with that, but Steve. Do you have something to say? Have you mixed up that uh, conversation I had with the township attorney? Okay. And, and she is concerned that this has taken so long to take action. Mm -hmm. Understands that the we were waiting on a noise ordinance, but also understands that the noise ordinance that goes to the township board and may not even be considered, or wasn't considered for three, won't be considered for several months. Uh, the applicant is under, uh, is has the right to a speedy decision. Yep. Yep. They are, are the season is coming, yep. close, yep. coming forth soon. She's suggesting that you make a decision on this one way or the other. And remember the request was that they had a special land use approval that uh, limited their hours until 8 o'clock at night, and they're asking to be allowed to stay open until 10 o'clock at night. And outside entertainment. Outside until 10 o'clock. Yeah, and outside entertainment. Because they never had outside entertainment right. before. So there's two different things. Sure. So okay. are the hours that they're asking to extend, those were for the exterior, outdoor, well, for the outdoor operations of the bar? I'm not certain. It might be a question. You know, I don't know if you need to make a decision tonight, but you could probably ask the applicant to come in next month to make no, a decision. But what, but what I'm saying is their request was for the extended extending of the hours was for their outdoor portion, not indoors. Correct? That's correct. Yes. Doesn't he get like three or something special permits or something to yes. stay open yeah. later? Four. Four? Yeah. I don't know if he stays later or not, but on the weekends, outdoor. I yeah. Didn't he determine those permits weren't valid, though, because they didn't meet the site plan, so those permits weren't supposed to be issued? No. That's what the attorney said. So That's they, another issue. Okay. Well, let's stick to the one we got yeah. right now. Right. Well, they're, they're okay. issued by the state, and, yes. and we have the uh, the municipality has the option of either accepting it or not yep. accepting it. But it's a special land use. If, help me out here. I've talked to the attorney too, and I know it's Steve. Special land use takes precedent. Yes, it does. I agree. Yes. Special land use takes precedent. Therefore, what the other group of so doing really is it supposed to be happening? I guess. Anything that you, they, their only recourse is to ask you guys to change their agreement. And, and this, the way this is written, he can. This is seven days a week. Yep. Yeah, that was a concern. It doesn't say seven what, days a week. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't, it doesn't say. state it any says, days. It's just hours. Yeah. yeah. It just states hours. It doesn't state and I days. I agree with some of is it. Is the applicant it was like here Friday, by Saturday or something? Thursday, Friday, yeah. Saturday. Hold on, just one second. Go ahead. Is the applicant here for on the rocks? Mm -hmm. Anybody here to represent on the rocks? I see no one raising their hand or coming forward. Okay, go back to what your, your question was. I, I think it's a little, what he's asking for is a little wide, too wide open here. It's mm -hmm. seven days is what I see. Um, I would see a you know, Friday, Saturday, maybe. Thursday, yeah, maybe. Thursday, Friday, Thursday, Saturday. Friday, Saturday. You know, and then too. like maybe you know, Memorial Weekend till, uh, yes, till, Labor, till Day. Labor Day. And that's, that'd be it, you know, not during school. Yep. And um, this is a special land use, so we have the, the but I don't see that any of that authority in there. to do what he just said. <laughs> but we can we can stipulate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He had mentioned when he was here that it was only going to be certain days and hours, and I think at he that did. time we had asked right. him to to narrow it down, bring back what he was yeah. actually asking well, for. We could narrow it down for him. We could. Mm -hmm. Actually, now that Christine has pointed this out, the Clay Township application has site plan consideration checked, not special land approval use says it on here too and there's an attachment signed by the applicant that says I hereby acknowledge I have received the following information in regards to special approval land use and site plan consideration application I don't know if that's a generic 
that they, everybody gets. My understanding is we're just dealing with a special land use approval extending of ours or however else we wanted to. It's a special land use. But yeah, all the site plan stuff is attached. Yep. So clarification. Fire, water, police. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Maybe it has, but we're not dealing with that because the request was for special land use approval labeled extended hours. And yes, we've had discussions with the applicant about potentially limiting the days and hours and weeks and I remember at one point he came back and I think he after consultation with his whomever just was going to leave it blank how he wanted it so we can do what he asked or we can make modifications correct Steve yeah. so well this looks like you know, seven days a week year round I, I'm not going to go for that uh, wait hold on Chris, Chris Dagey had a question oh, sorry well would it be I know we're under a time crunch here, but it sure seems like the applicant should kind of, you know, for certain hours, maybe things work better for him certain days if we say something, and it's like, it'd sure be nice to get his input before I we make a motion. Table, you know, I would suggest you table this until and we notify him to be here, ask him to be yeah. here. Yeah. That seems like a better course yeah. of action Instead to me. Take, making decisions that he may not even agree with anyways. Right. Yeah. Was he... I don't think he got personal notification, but you could see on the website it was back on, correct? Yeah, we probably, I mean, if I were him, I would have thought, okay, we're still dealing with the noise ordinance, so why Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, we reach out to him then? If we table it, we'll just reach out to him and let him know that we'll have it on for next uh, planning our commission? Our next meeting will be April 26th. Yeah, it yeah. has to be then. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely has to be then. One way or the other, we make a decision. How's that? That's <laughs> what we can do. Yep. Or he can meet with Steve or something, right? Yeah. Yeah, he can meet. Has he has he called, reached out to you? No. No. I can reach out to him. Would you mind? Let's do that. That would be great. Could yep. you please reach out to him? Let him know what has happened and where we're at. Um, and if he's questioning about the noise ordinance, you can let him know that went to the township board. Okay. How's that sound? So I suppose we need a motion. Motion to table. Support. So we have Debbie Eddy and Chris Stagey to table. So you mentioned in the motion that we're tabling it to the 426 date, so it's very clear. Yes. Would you mind amending your motion? I will motion it to table it till 426, 2023. Again. Any further discussion? Hearing none, when you get a chance, roll call, please. Who was the second on that? Um, Chris Davy. Deborah Addy. Yes. Mark Bouchard. Yes. Christopher Daggy. Yes. Chris Siltunen. Yes. Christine Holcomb. Yes. Tom Kozell. Yes. Robert Musling. Yes. Bob Jacobs is absent. And Kathy Schweikart. Yes. Thank you. All right. Moving on to item number eight, which is planning consultant report. <laughs> thank you, Steve. Thanks for all your help and everything. This has been a little busy month. Um, number nine, ZBA representatives report. Debbie Addy. Okay, um, there was a meeting February 15th, and it was a big meeting um, because an attorney um, came and he wanted clarification on section 3.01-9, uh, subparagraph 13 of the zoning ordinance. And basically it was about um, pole barns and the use of pole barns on properties. Um, so I thought I'd do is read the motion to you so it makes it really clear. There was a motion by McInerney, second by Shemansky, 
that the ZBA interpret the zoning ordinance section 3.10, I'm sorry, 3.01.09, that the owner of the of a property over two acres can build a pole barn as permitted, as permitted use and clearly allowable. The issue is the seasonal storage of boats in a residential district allowing for the charge of rent and storage within the pole barn which makes it a commercial or industrial use it it is the opinion that what was written in the ordinance for storage on residential property is intended for the storage of the homeowner boats and not being charged as a business what the peti pe petitioner is asking to do is turning it into a business which is not accept acceptable accessory use in residential property. So that was clarified for these folks and they may go to circuit court about that. Okay. Anything further? That was it. No, that, was that, it. Was, that was it. Mm -hmm. That was a big one. Yeah. It was huge. Look at this. Yeah. <coughs> Gary, were you at the ZBA meeting? Do you have anything you want to add or? To that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was just a, a business owner that operates in an R1 district. Um, he's uh, in a uh, non-conforming use and he, he owns the property next to it and wants to build a 6,000 square foot uh, a sensory structure on that property. And there is a house on that property. Uh, so there's nothing in the ordinance that Right, right. All right, I'm going to move on to 10 board representative report. Mark, um, I have nothing. <laughs> it was quiet at the board meeting, huh? <laughs> All right, <laughs> item number 11 is chairperson's report. Um, it's been kind of hectic with trying to talk to attorneys, or the attorney and Steve. I really appreciate both their help in trying to get work through um, questions in regards to numerous items that have come before us for sure. Zoning, or not zoning, the noise ordinance and rezoning and things of that sort. I also want to recognize our chief um, of the fire departments here. Thank you very much for your input and being willing to show up and answer any questions we had on any of these items on our agenda today. Same thing with Gary. Thank you very much, appreciate it. And for all the hard work everybody else has done on this board trying to get through this massive amount of paperwork at times. So, number 12 would be Planning Commission members' comments. Everybody talked out? Pretty mm -hmm. much. Everybody want to go home? <laughs> 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 Sorry. Item number 13 is public comments. Anybody who wishes to make a public comment, please come to the podium. Remember the rules as far as time limits, because we're going to adhere to them tonight for sure. And state your name and address, please. Mark McClendon, 7869 Inglewood. Just a couple comments about uh, On the Rocks. Uh, first, was a sound study ever ordered for them or required? Only for Blue Cabana, not for them? They okay. Didn't, they didn't have entertainment. They have no outside entertainment, and the sound study we did for the, oh boy, the Blue Cabana. <clears throat> but you did Blue yeah. Cabana, but not On the Rocks. No. Oh my God. Okay, cool. Okay, uh, next, March 17th, uh, they had a, a big to-do. Here's some pictures. Number one, this is, Vince, uh, this is Mr. Stewart's famous boat. This is this oh. year? This yeah, is last week. Last week. Okay, last week. okay. this is their tent. Notice how the door of the tent faces right to his house, shooting all the music right towards him. And then here, take a look here. This is St. Patty's Day, all the crowd walking in and out. 50 feet from this home. They could have easily put the door on the other end. Okay, next. Um, the tent is 
adjacent, right across the canal from Vince's house. They got another 150 feet further towards the water that they could move it. But apparently it's not worth their time to take care of the needs of the neighbors. All they want to do is aggravate him and make his home unlivable. Next, a police officer was called on the 17th. I was there. I saw the officer come down the road. It was 9 o'clock at night. Their music was blaring. The officer came into Vince's home. Then he left, came around, told Tim to turn the music down. Now, my question to you is this. If your existing permit for him requires him to shut his music off at 8 o'clock, and he has it at 9, he is, he is showing utter disrespect for your permit process. What is he going to do to us when you grant him 10 o'clock? OK, a person that does their own thing does their own thing. And you need to control those people. OK, next. OK, if you look at the pictures, do you see any acoustic barriers? Do you see any effort to make his life more livable or his wife's life? All you got to do is put up barriers, OK? Now, uh, the, the, the whole cure to this is simple. It's called uh, do unto others as you would do unto them, OK? Move that sucking tent down, OK? Turn the music down. That's simple. Now, as far as your noise ordinance goes, uh, in the chief of police saying uh, it takes high training to get these people trained in acoustics, th there's an app for your phone. Boom. I could have any 12 year old show you how to measure it. You get two officers, two phones, you average the difference, you say, hey, you're too loud. You prove it with your phone that it's any different. Boom, that's done. Without an ordinance, there's no teeth in the law. And then the other thing with the ordinance is the thing I'm just taking, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm going to keep you to the three minutes mark, so you're going to have to wrap it up, okay? Oh, sure, sure. Thank you. I'll wrap it up. As far as the noise ordinance goes, uh, uh, the thing is uh, measure on their property, okay? Why? The last thing you want to do is have Off the Rocks go over to, come over to Mr. Stewart's property and measure sound there. That's a good way to get someone killed. You, you can get an alcohol-inspired fight real easy, and we don't want that. Measure it at their property line, and that's the way it needs to be. Anyway, so what, what I see here is simple disregard for the neighbors. I'm a business owner on the street, okay? I have a vacation rental. I had a decrease in income last year. Why? I value the neighbors. Okay, what have I done? I've taken my house from 16 people. I want to stop you now because we're now at four minutes, and everything you are saying now we've heard before, and we really do hear you. We, we heard okay, you before. Thank you. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Do you want your pictures, or do you want us to keep? Please keep them and look. Okay. Um, any other public comments? Please come forward. State your name. Down on M29. Were you there? there? <laughs> <laughs> I just drove by. <laughs> so, my name is Brian Klingenberg, 9032 Field Road. And um, I'm not sure if I'm in front of the right group, but I have issues with 3480 Fruit Street, Algonac Sand and Supply. I have pretty much the same issues total disregard for the neighbors. For me, my wife. Um, they work past their zoned hours, their property, every, everything in the property hasn't been inspected in a long time, so their berms aren't proper, the depths of uh, the pits they're digging, the slopes of the pits. And the location you know, you're talking about again is? Algonac um, Sand and Supply, which sure. is okay. 3480 Fruit Street. So I've made several complaints to the police department with actually no results as of yet to um, the code enforcement officer for the past two years I've been complaining about this with no results so I don't know if this is the group if I need to go to city council or the board of trustees mm -hmm. we have no enforcement here okay no but we appreciate you showing up and waiting however long oh, you've not waited fine. so um, 
I just want to follow the proper avenue to get this kind of resolved and taken care of. You know, we all got to live together, and I got to live next to this guy. So you're welcome to come to the board during the public hearing uh, comment area and address your concerns there. And we meet the. First Do I have to fill out an application for? No. no. Just come in and. Do you have the date of that? Pardon? The date of that meeting? Uh, it's the first Monday of the month and the third Monday of the month. Six o'clock. Six, right. 6 p.m. And public comments are like right at the beginning. Yep. <laughs> oh, perfect. So, so <laughs> be on time. <laughs> Give it and I'll get off. That's all, yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yes. Um, anybody else, public comments, please come forward, state your name. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're going to try, you know what, three minutes, I give you the warning and you get to four yeah, and then okay. we're done. Be that long. No, I'm down, I live across the street from the bar. I just have a question, you're talking about the 75 no decibels, have you guys ever experienced 75 decibels at 40 feet? Maybe you should. It might be a good idea before you make a decision. With our house, they were 75 at our lot line. And it was like 65 or 67 in the house, and the police came, and he couldn't believe how loud it was, and he had him turn it down last weekend. So, okay, your ordinances, that one's just full of shit. It's not going to help. You're just going to create more problems, and like he said, he's, you're ruining our house, allowing these people. And you saw the picture. He he made that comment a couple of times in prior meetings that he aims the door out to the lake and all this, and he doesn't make the sound go to our house, which he does constantly. He goes out of his way to aim it to the house. So you, if you give him 10 o'clock, you can have problems. I'm going to turn my radio up as loud as his every time, and we're going to have an issue. I've already done it a couple of times because no one does anything about this. And the, it seems like I'm the only one that could fight my own battle over there. You guys are supposed to be taking care of it. Thank you so much. Well, they yeah. don't yeah. picture, they don't do Anybody else in the public who would like to come forward and state their name and address? Hello, Cindy Valentine. My address is 3523 Fruit Road. Um, I'm up here with regards to the core cap mini storage. Although the ZBA approved the variance, um, this board still needed to approve the site plan. So I found it a little concerning that there is no public hearing. There is no avenue for public comments beforehand to enable me to express my concerns. Um, I thought it was fabulous that Mr. Muscat is putting in a two hour firewall. However, um, my building doesn't have a two-hour firewall, and uh, there is now no fire access to the rear of my house with that variance that they granted with his building there. So um, it is being appealed in circuit court, but I think that this board should have at least been aware of that factor, that there is a concern there. So that's all I have. We don't set public hearings for site planning. No, but my, my issue was I didn't have an avenue for public comments. There wasn't a public hearing that you could give a public comment. Public okay. comments are at the end of the agenda, which, mm -hmm. like you commented, the board is at the beginning of the meeting, and that's kind of why we moved them to the beginning of the meeting, so people beforehand would have the opportunity to speak and be able to comment on things on our agenda. Understood. Thanks. Thank you. Any more public comments? One more time. I see no one raising their hand or coming forward. So item number 14 is a German. Support. <laughs> support. Oh, <I'll> touch. <laughs> Get a motion to support. <laughs> all in favor. Aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you very much. Seconded.